you know, it really can't be overstated because it was 175 years ago that uh, the Latter-day Saints came with their trek across Iowa and came to what they named Haynesville. Nothing has influenced Council Bluffs more than the railroads. But would we have had those railroads were it not for what the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, created uh, back in 1846? But, they had created an actual functioning community. There were a lot of little communities along the west, along the frontier, but uh, because of, they knew that the pilgrims would be coming through for many years, they took the time to establish a functioning town, and this became the organized town of the frontier. And in fact, Orson Hyde even marketed that fact to the people out east, the gold rushers, for example, saying, you know, if you want to come west, Here's a place you can get outfitted, a place you can stay, you can get your perfect, you can get everything you need. And in fact, it was so successful, I would say by 1860, virtually all wagon trains west were leaving from Council Bluffs. So, you know, when the, when it was came time to think in terms of railroads and speculators were buying land as to where the railroads might go, would they have done that at just some other random places? Probably not. Probably it all relates back to what happened here 175 years ago with the Mormons creating Kingsville. The railroads have been so significant to Council Bluffs. You don't have to go very many generations back. Uh, in fact, not many generations at all, and you will find many, you know, many relatives that worked for the railroads. And in fact, by the 1950s, a full quarter of Council Bluffs was working for the railroads. Many times when I've been growing up, people said, Council Bluffs has no pride. That's not true. Uh, it's just that I think of Council Bluffs, we identify with the entire metro area, but our identity is Council Bluffs. And over the last 20 years, I've seen more and more things that have come along that are kind of helping us reshape and refocus that identity. Well, I'm going to say not that many years ago, but you know, this the, the whole Bayless Park is a source of civic pride. And we've got so many other things, like what's going on with the Iowa Closed Building that 712 Initiatives is doing, Pace, you know, the McCormick Building up the street, uh, the things that are going on in the 100 block, all of the public art projects around. Council Bluffs has changed probably more in the last 20 years than the prior 40 I've lived here, and a lot for the better. Because Council Bluffs has changed so much because we were such a player on the national stage. Everybody, when you're going west, you know, a lot of towns argue about where the West began. I mean, you can drive around the, the all over the Midwest. And you see uh, so many towns claim they're where the West began. I really don't know, don't care, I have no idea. But I do know where the East ended, and that's Council Bluffs. Because when you look at the, look at a railroad map and, and, and put it on its side, it looks like a funnel with all of those rail lines coming to a little point. And that little point is Council Bluffs. Not Omaha, Council Bluffs. Particularly originally, before there was a bridge, everybody on that new westbound route had to get off here. Every parcel and every individual, this is where the East ended at railroad. So if you want your business to be successful, if you want your industry to be successful, you darn well better have a presence in Council Bluffs. And they did. We had all kinds of industries here. And we were manufacturing everything from confectionery to cigars to carriages. So every downtown has changed over the past 175 years. I'm going to say ours has changed more than just about anything.